Hello, my name is Zach Albus. I support the Texas Instruments MSP430 microcontroller product line. This session is intended to provide a brief but informative technical overview in how to use the MSP430 clock system. The goal is not to get into device specific details. Please keep in mind that there are some differences family to family not fully covered here, but rather to review the common features across most MSP430 families and how to best leverage its capabilities in your specific MSP430 hardware design. As we go through the next slides, we will be reviewing basics of any MSP430 clock system and the importance to achieving ultra-low power applications. We will cover some of the differences between device families, such as the 1XX, 2XX, and 5XX, and we will wrap up reviewing some of the high-level considerations for designers when using the MSP430 and its flexible clock system. Let's get started looking at the importance of the MSP430 clock system. The MSP430 is well known for its ability to achieve ultra-low power, or ULP for short, to embedded MCU applications. This is done through a variety of low power modes, but also by waking from those low power modes fast, by keeping active power low, as well as by providing intelligent peripherals that can operate independent from the CPU. These are all critical to realizing a ULP architecture, and all of these capabilities of the MSP430 are made possible through the flexible and high performance design of the clock system. There are three main aspects to the clock system. First, it must have a CPU clock that is fast to wake, stable, flexible in frequency output, as well as low power. Secondly, there must be a clock that goes to each peripheral that requires one. In general, it needs to have the same care bouts as the CPU with the additional option to operate even when the CPU is not. And third, the ultra low power, low frequency, accurate and reliable clock is needed for standby operations. All of these needs are addressed within the MSP430 clock system architecture and provide the foundation to its ULP DNA. Now let's look more closely at the basics to any MSP430 clock system. Before we consider peripherals, if we look just at the typical CPU duty cycle in any application where the CPU is asleep for some period of time, wakes to process some instructions, and returns to sleep, we find the basic building blocks for the MSP430 clock system an ultra low power low frequency clock source called a clock or auxiliary clock that is used to source a timer for example during the sleep state of the CPU or low power modes the second element is M clock or the master clock this branch of the clock tree is specifically used to source the CPU with the system clock power is still important when on although much higher than for a clock but it also must operate at a high clock rate up to the maximum CPU clock at a minimum and it must be capable of ultra fast wake up. Wake up is important because it minimizes the time that the system waits to transition from low power mode to active mode to execute instructions quickly and efficiently. The MSP430 clock system's ability to meet these requirements is what provides its ULP performance enabling ultra low power standby power consumption with the CPU off an ultra-fast wake-up to engage the CPU quickly at a high frequency so that it can then quickly go back to the ULP standby state once the tasks are completed awaiting the next interrupt request. Now let's take a deeper look into the capabilities of the clock system and provide some meaning behind each of the clock options that are possible. LFXT1 is the most common clock source within the MSP430 clock system and is used to provide a 32.768 kHz clock source to the A clock branch of the tree, sourcing at a minimum a timer, perhaps an RTC. It is in every MSP430 device and typically is in conjunction with an external 32 kHz watch crystal. Note that there are integrated load caps built into LFXT1 on MSP430 when using a 32.768 kHz crystal. It is possible in our newer parts to use LFXT1 to source a low frequency digital clock from off chip. Please check the device specific data sheet or family users guides for more details. And it is worth noting that LFXT1 has a high frequency mode as well, often referred to as HFXT1 or just XT1 that we will discuss in a moment. Next, the VLO, or Very Low Frequency Low Power Oscillator, is built into our 2XX, 5XX, and 6XX devices. This clock source is fully integrated and provides a clock frequency of approximately 10 kHz to the system. 
It consumes well under one microamp, and when used as a wake-up timer clock source, it provides the lowest power LPM3 operation possible. However, it is not designed to be accurate and varies quite a bit device to device and over temperature and voltage. Think of it as a good enough wake-up clock that is reliable, cheap, and ultra-low power. REFO is yet another option for a fully integrated clock source and is built into our 5XX and 6XX devices. REFO is also designed to be low power but does consume more than the VLO at approximately 3 microamps. The added current also means a more stable frequency. REFO is factory calibrated to 32.768 kHz and offers plus or minus 3.5% tolerance over temperature and voltage. It is not as accurate as a watch crystal but does provide other options to designers looking for a smaller bomb, lower cost, and reasonable clock accuracy. That covers the low frequency options. Now let's look at the high frequency choices. As with LFXT1, the DCO, or Digitally Controlled Oscillator, is also available on all MSP430 devices. It is a fully integrated high frequency oscillator used most typically for CPU and peripheral clocking. It can be tuned to output over a wide range of frequencies as low as 100 kHz and up to greater than 20 MHz, depending on device family. Other advantages of this high frequency clock is that it is quite low power and can turn on in less than 6 microseconds with some devices capable of waking in less than one microsecond to a stable, high-frequency clock. Both of these abilities of the DCO are key advantages over external crystals and clocks, making the DCO a fundamental component of the MSP430's ultra-low power operation. The FLL feature is actually an extension to the DCO in some devices that offers automatic tuning of the DCO output frequency compared to a low frequency clock reference such as a 32.768 kHz crystal. Modosk, as the name implies, is designed as a module or peripheral oscillator and it is in our 5XX and 6XX families. It sources a 5 MHz clock for automatic usage by modules such as the flash controller and ADCs. It is completely user independent and turns on or off as requested by the peripherals that use it. Lastly, we have XT1 and XT2. These are the high frequency oscillator circuits that interface with a crystal or resonator. Supported frequency range varies by device family. When an accurate high frequency clock is needed in application, such as supporting USB or RF, usage of XT1 or XT2 is critical. Also note that some of our smaller pin count devices don't support one or both of these high frequency oscillators, so be sure to check your device specific data sheet. Now, looking at it in a bit more detail, this table shows the same features of the MSP430 clock implementations and highlights them based on frequency range, relative precision, and typical application and devices supported. Keep in mind, not all features are implemented in all devices. It is important to always check the device specific data sheet as well as family specific users guide to learn specifics regarding your particular device's feature set and usage. Now let's try to summarize this broad topic into some common areas to be considered regarding the clock system when designing with MSP430. First is the high level clock architecture. There are three fundamental branches to the MSP430 clock tree. A clock is typically seen as the low frequency clock during low power modes that is by design ultra low power and as an example would be used to clock a timer peripheral during low power mode 3 to achieve accurate and periodic wake up from a watch crystal for the CPU. M clock is the clock that sources the CPU and is typically the internal high frequency DCO. Lastly comes the SM clock branch which is designed to be flexible as it often sources higher frequency peripherals during active mode of the CPU either from the internal DCO or external clock source. Another important consideration comes with the use of the 32 kHz crystal or watch crystal. The MSP430 LFXT1 oscillator is designed for this purpose and is designed to be very low power. It is not always typical to many MCUs on the market and for some applications may require careful attention to get proper and reliable operation. Use of crystals that have compatible parameters are important, but most often layout, assembly, and application environment are core factors leading to incorrect watch crystal operation. There are also industry standard tests that are recommended on new designs, such as oscillation allowance testing, to determine safety factor of an oscillator system. 
Following recommendation and performing validation testing are the best preemptive measures that can be taken to assure a robust and reliable 32 kilohertz oscillator. Lastly, it is important to understand the features and performance of a given MSP430 device and how that needs to enable the requirements of the application for the desired operation, be it frequency needs, power requirements, or feature set. Hand in hand with this understanding is keeping in mind some fundamentals to the behavior of the clock system in a given MSP430 device. Most notable, perhaps, is the instant on watchdog upon power up. Failure to realize this behavior can result in long debug efforts that are targeted at incorrect root causes. Also important to highlight are the clock failsafes built into many of the MSP430 oscillators. Incorrect handling of these failsafes can result in incorrect frequencies on chip and erroneous timing operation in application. Understanding how these work and implementing recommended software to handle as well as leverage these robustness and safety features can provide for solid and reliable application performance. Wrapping up, here are some links to related collateral that provide more detail into specific areas that have been discussed in this presentation. The first is for the 5XX and 6XX core libraries. Included in these libraries are software functions for the MSP430, F5XX, and 6XX family that ease the setup process for accomplishing a wide range of clock module setup options. One common area of interest is related to usage of 32.768 kHz watch crystals as this is so critical to achieving accurate timing for real-time clock functions as well as inherent support for the most used low power mode, LPM3. Numerous resources both from TI as well as in the public domain exist and can be located. And as stated earlier, always refer to the device-specific documentation to get the full details regarding capabilities of a given device or family. Thanks for your time and thanks for your interest in using the MSP430 microcontroller family.